Okay, where do I even start with this? What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. For this video, uh, this is like the better part of two years ago by now, so I'm going to do my best to try and keep things in perfect order and explain everything in, in as much detail as I can, but like I said, this is like two years plus ago by now, so not everything might be in 100% perfect chronological order, but everything that I'm about to say is 100% real, I'm not lying about anything, I wouldn't do that, um, so yeah. Let's get into the time that I had a stalker. This first started when I was about 16 or 17 because it was like in my, at the end of my first year of college towards my second year. And this person was fully trying to be A from Pretty Little Liars. If you watch Pretty Little Liars, you'll know what I'm talking about. But pretty much this person or multiple people stalks and harasses the main characters throughout like seven seasons using the name A. Um, and the first time this happened was weirdly just after I'd first got into Pretty Little Liars. One of my friends at college had put me onto it, then I got into it and started watching it and so on. And my brother had recently got a car at this point and he got me to go out at it, look at it and all that. And then later that same day, he comes back inside and shows me this note that he's found. And no word of light literally says something like, don't say I never give you anything, eh? which is an exact note or text from the show. I had no clue where it came from. I didn't know why that note was there. I didn't put it there. Um, people assumed that I'd put it there. I'd just got into Pretty Little Liars. The main villain was called A. It adds up. I put the note there as a joke, but I didn't. And then that was like it for about a few weeks. And the way our classroom at college is laid out is there is the front door all the desks and at the back of the classroom were these little slots in the wall which is where we kept all our work and all our folders and stuff. Then notes started being left in my slot, all signed by A. One of them were like this really scribbly note written out really quickly and I can't for the life of me, the life in me, remember what it said. But again, it was signed A. I asked my friends who sat around me, did they put it there, is this a joke? Um, I showed our, te our tutor and he just laughed it off as kind of a joke, like, hi, hey, yeah, this is just like students being silly. Nobody owned up to it, and I thought it was weird, obviously, because it's like the second note I've got signed by A, or the second note that's been placed around signed by A. Uh, but I didn't really think much of it, I kept it because I just wanted to keep track of if it was going to happen again and again, which it did. Eventually, this is when things started to like get freaky, because at first this was just like, you know, someone in my class is fucking with me. Um, then one came through our letterbox. This was a folded up sheet of paper with my name handwritten on the back, but the note was like a ransom note, you know, cut out pieces of a magazine. It was the letters glued on and it said, I'm getting closer, A. Eh? And that was like, it was like so freaky because first of all, whoever it was clearly knows me. Whoever it was clearly knows where I live and whoever it was, clearly knows that I liked Pretty Little Liars, but by this point, me and the person that had put me onto it weren't really friends anymore. I didn't think it were because it started while I was still talking to her, it started while we were still friends, uh, and the only people that I'd ever had over at my house was, at this point, one of my closest friends, but he wasn't even into Pretty Little Liars, and I didn't really suspect him straight away because I just didn't think he'd bother doing anything like this. And I hid all this away because I didn't want to freak my parents out because if they saw this, I either thought they'd think I'm just having a joke, they'd think I'm doing this all myself, or they'd instantly jump into a panic and call the police or something. But I didn't know what to think of it. I didn't know how far this was gonna go. I didn't know if it was just somebody who were playing a running joke on me and they were gonna come forward any time now. Um, but eventually I got another note in my slot in the wall um, again, I can't remember what this one said. This, I think it was relating to my friends, something about my friends. And then I passed it around and they agreed to start going around the classroom and just like trying to figure out if anybody there like liked Pretty Little Liars, knew me or was the one sending the notes. Like we started trying to look at people's handwriting and stuff like that because the majority of the notes were handwritten. There was like two that weren't. Um, 
And this is where it gets really weird. The next note I got, this was in my class again, and this time, there's been no notes for about a few days. Nothing all that day, and then I get my water out of my bag, and there is a note taped to my water bottle. And the freakiest part about this is it's typewritten, like, on a typewriter. And I own a typewriter, and I've been to a few of my friends' houses, they don't own typewriters, Maybe it were a font, I don't know, you know, like on your computer, select your font, I don't know if there's one to make it look like a typewriter, but whoever this was either owned a typewriter or had somehow had access to my typewriter, and this time it was song lyrics, it was the chorus from Deep Purple's anthem, and I'll, I'll put it on screen, but it says, if the day would only come, then you might just appear, even though you'd soon be gone, when I reach out my hand. If I could see you, if only I could see you, to see if you are laughing or crying. But this was like the first time, besides from it coming through my letterbox, that it had actually come to me, like, on, on a part of my property, because it was in my bag, and like, there'd been nothing there that whole day, there'd been nothing there for days, and this was a fresh bottle of water that I got that morning. So whoever it was, by this point, I'm thinking, they're clearly in my class. They're clearly someone who I know, someone who knows me, someone who is close by. And I showed it to my tutor because this was getting a bit far by now. Like, so I showed it to my tutor, and she went round the entire class and asked if it was them who had done it. All of them said that they hadn't seen anything, and it wasn't them. But it's like, it was in my bag, so if nobody, if nobody in that classroom had genuinely put it in my bag, then it must have happened before that class. That's the only logical explanation. But I, I really don't know. I was at a complete loss by this point. The craziest part was, after that note, it just stopped. Nothing else happened. I'd been interrogating pretty much my friends, everybody that I knew, everyone I'd ever had the slightest bit of contact with. And then it just ended. Like for a few months, absolutely nothing. And then one day, like in the middle of my second year of college, starts up all over again. And it were another note, but I don't know how much detail I should give about this one. It was somebody that I know who had just come out to me as bisexual. And the note said, tell them or I will, relating to my friend group and their parents. Tell them or I will, nobody will ever believe it wasn't you. Um, pretty much hinting to the fact that they were going to expose this person as being bisexual and nobody would believe that I hadn't outed them. I didn't do it and they didn't end up doing anything either. And by this point, me and my best friend Will, Thorn Hartmeyer's in gaming once again, Go follow him. At this point, we'd put together like a suspect board, you know, like how police do when they're working a case. And we listed everybody in our class and in our personal lives who we thought could have possibly been doing this and then the motivations. And we were kind of working on process of elimination to try and go through like least likely and least likely motive to most likely and most likely motive. And at first, I thought it was someone who were in my first year class because at the house we lived in before this one, there were this little road and then this alleyway up here and she lived just up this alley and we we weren't friends, to put it simply. We'd, we'd had a massive argument. The whole dynamic of the friend group was falling apart. So my first thought was her because she'd been around me and she'd been around the other person who liked Pretty Little Lies, so she would have heard about it and she would have known about A and all that and she would have known where I lived because we were literally just an alley apart. But this second time around was when it got, like, dangerous, in my opinion. Um, we had this suspect board and I planned on showing him the notes this happened before the suspect board, sorry. I planned on showing him the notes and I was going to dig them out and take pictures and send them to him. But as I'm looking through my boxes and my drawers to try and find the notes, I get a text from an unknown number and it's just every note I've got laid out in front of the camera and a picture of them. That's it. And it's like, the impression was, you're not going to find them, I've got them. Whoever the fuck it was. The notes are nowhere to be found. I still haven't found them. But whoever was giving me the notes had taken them back now. This person had now either been in my house or gone through my bag at college to remove them as I was getting them, kind of. So that's when we put this suspect board together and 
everything was a dead end. We came up with multiple suspects, like, we suspected my brother because he lived with us at the time. We suspected someone that I'd started seeing because, I don't know, it ended on a bit of a bad note, so maybe he was, I don't know, angry at me because things ended, and a lot of them were love-themed, a lot of the notes, like the one with the lyrics in it, that's from a love song. So I thought that could have been a possibility, but that didn't make sense because he ended things with me, so why would he be angry that things were over? Like, literally everything was a dead end and we were getting frustrated, I was getting frustrated, we were getting freaked out. Then I'm convinced I actually saw this person. Going round the street that we used to live on, there's this massive road, and, go, and it goes right past a school. There's a school on this side, and like, just, I think it's like a scrapyard on this side, but there's big gates that go down into this scrapyard, and between these gates there is a field on one side, the scrapyard here, and then gates in the middle, and it it's like behind the field, but also behind the scrapyard. Does that make sense? I try and put a Google Maps image up of what I'm talking about, and I was walking the dog down that street, and there was this person, like, down there, dressed head to toe in black and they had like a mask on you know like what we have to wear now because of corona they had that on and like goggles and like they were just like crouched in the grass because it like really overgrown grass here and as soon as i looked down they crouched down behind the grass and i don't know maybe it was just someone from the scrapyard because of the way they were dressed but i don't know the, their behavior just seemed weird and suspicious as if i needed anything else to make me more paranoid as we were working on the suspect board, things began to relax, like whoever it was must have got the idea that we were onto them or we were closing in, because I didn't get any notes the whole time, any notes, any texts, nothing, the whole time we were working on the suspect board. Um, even though we didn't, event we didn't actually come to any conclusions, we got like top three suspects. Even then we didn't have any concrete proof, they weren't like, it wasn't for sure, that's them. It was just most likely top three. My theory is that it's either somebody that I knew in my first two years of college, or somebody that I've known from the past who I just haven't suspected, or it's just some random person who like who loves Pretty Little Liars, and it's just a coincidence that I like Pretty Little Liars as well. To this day, it still confuses me and I still think about it a lot, I mean obviously I'm making a video about it, because it's like, why, who, how, and when? There were so many things that were like, well they must have been in my house, they must have been in my class, like the typewriter, the notes going missing, the thing appearing in my bag, in my slot, it's like this person knew where I lived, knew that I had a typewriter, knew which slot was mine, and knew my bag. And that's terrifying to think of, someone knows that much about me but I don't have a clue who it is. I really do wish I had more answers because it's like, it, it just still plays on my mind quite a lot. But yeah, that wraps up this stalker story time. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subs as quickly as possible. And be sure to follow me on all my social medias. Uh, but don't come stalking me because you will be blocked. Thanks for watching, I will see you Friday. I know I said Friday at the end of my last video, but I meant Monday. Bye for now.